Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. 6.30. All the gold. There you go. In California. Everybody. Is in a bank in, in the middle, middle of Paris. Well, you know, that's not entirely true. It's not all in a bank in Beverly Hills because some of it landed in Larry Gatlin's back pocket. I'm pretty sure of this fact. Larry Larry Wayne Gatlin, he's a country music superstar. He's a social commentator. He's a Grammy Award winner. Uh, and he's, he's I, I'm proud to call him my friend. A man who once made me an honorary Gatlin brother, and and he's never his brother brothers have never let him forget it because it was maybe a bad decision. Larry Wayne Gatlin, how are you? Hey, how are you, BW? I'm doing very well. Uh, we are so glad to have you here with the Morning Majority. It's Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Ham, and I want to ask you a question. I hear you have some very nice things to say about the late Betty Ford. I was so, sort of surprised that you had something to say, but tell the story about why you feel so strongly about Betty Ford. First of all, how many Brians do you all have? There? we got two. Too many. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> I'm really thinking up. of changing my name. <laughs> hey, Mary Catherine, how are you? I, I have done shows with that nice lady over in New York, and nice to meet the other Brian. Betty Ford, how, how can you not say nice things about that wonderful lady? I, I miss her already. Uh, you know, I'm a recovering drunk, and uh, I, I wrote a little uh, op-ed piece, not really an op-ed this time, but a little article for foxnews.com, where I just explained that she she gave us kind of, not exactly political cover, but she gave us old drunks the right to, uh, to hold our heads up high, you know, to say, hey, uh, we're not bad people, we're not weak people, we're, we're sick people, we need to, speaking of sick people, well, anyway, uh, 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 B.W., that might be you. No, I know. A little bit sick. But but gave us uh, the right to come in out of the cold, as I put it in the little, the little op-ed. Uh, I absolutely loved her. I tell you what, she was a feisty old gal. She she didn't take a lot of, how can we say this? Guff? She didn't take a lot of... Uh, you, you know, oh, you know this, is a, this is a family show, Larry. <laughs> oh, no. I fixed. I said she didn't take any bovine droppings from anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a technical term, other Brian. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. The <laughs> Brian from West Texas knows what that is. That's right. But, but she was really, you know, she was well spoken. Uh, she fought them tooth and nail. Uh, you know, when they, her family, uh, you know, realized and tried to convince her that she had the problem, they brought in my old friend, Dr. Joseph Persh. Uh, from California. At right. that time, he was uh, the the head of the uh, the naval. Uh, he, he was a Navy captain from Yugoslavia, and uh, came over here as a kid after the war. A, a wonderful, wonderful man. He was in charge of her treatment, and uh, later was in charge of mine. I, I did not go to the Betty Ford Center. I went in there one time to see Johnny Cash. But he was in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm serious. John said, hey, Pilgrim, we got another bed next door. You might ought to check in. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, at Dr. Persh, uh, uh, Mrs. Ford set up the Betty Ford Center before Dr. Persh got out of the Navy. And then and he helped her do it, helped put in the program. Uh, and then I later, he, he took over the care unit out in Orange County, California. So I went out there. And uh, by the grace of God, I'm sober and I don't. You know, I used to live by the motto, even Colombian drug lords' children have to eat. So, you know, and I did not I did my part to, to keep them in shoes and, and you know, food. So, <laughs> oh, uh, I, uh, I'm grateful to Betty Ford. Uh, they called uh, from out there. I was very, very grateful that we were on the list. I think my brother Rudy might try to go out there and kind of represent our family. Hey, Larry, would... When you you I read your piece, I was interested to find out. I mean, it's difficult if you if you're an alcoholic today to come forward and admit that you're an alcoholic. But what was it like back then? You know, to admit to come out and say, "Hey, you know, I've got a problem." Well, you know, uh, Dr. Henry Kissinger said one uh, something many years ago. He said, "It is amazing how simple decision making really becomes when one is left with no alternatives." My alternatives were not good. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I've written a song about my early or, or about the, the latter stages of the, the drug and alcohol addiction. The song goes, I thought I was dancing till somebody stepped on my fingers. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get that going for you. And, and I'll tell you what happened. My, my wife had confronted me, my wife of 41 years, who I adore, uh, Janice. Brian, we, we've recently, or either Brian, pick one, we've, we've moved back uh, to Nashville, Tennessee after 20 years of being gone. Uh, lived in Austin for 20 years. But right. she and other friends, you know, confronted me with this problem. And I just said, oh, good Lord, I work hard and I'm going to play hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, cocaine and booze and drugs – that was the currency of the realm back in those days, right. and to a large extent still is. But I tell you what it took. It took uh, a couple of really uh, horrible nights of all-nighters and, and feeling, you know, like a, feeling like a tramp and a, a bad guy. My, my old friend, uh, Coach Daryl Royal, I know you know that name, B.W. That's right, UT. Uh, the great, great, iconic, legendary football coach at the University of Texas. He, uh, at a concert one night in Dallas, he came up, he said, Cowboy, he said, I love you like my own son, but you're one screwed up little cowboy, let's go get some help. So I told him, I said, I said, Daryl, I can do this by myself. He said, you cannot. I said, I'll, I'll show you. I'll promise Daryl Royal I'll do it. Well, I, I stayed, I didn't do any uh, cocaine. I kept drinking. I thought that was just okay for uh, 17 days. And uh, one night in Fort Worth, uh, after an all-nighter and, some folks had some of that, you know, Peruvian marching powder. And um, I did it, Stood, stayed up all night, and felt like, you know, bovine droppings the next day. <laughs> right. yeah. And I'd made a, I'd made a vow to Daryl Royal, and I kept yeah. that vow. I went home to, to Nashville and I told Janice what I was going to do. I called Daryl. Let me tell you the wonderful thing about what Coach Royal did. He didn't just, he didn't send me to treatment. He took me to treatment. Yeah. So I went out there. Dr. Purse did the program. And it's funny what Dr. Purse told me in that, uh, that meeting that morning. He said, Larry, your problem is not drugs and alcohol. Your problem is Larry. You're a horse's ass. <laughs> yeah, you're a horse's ass. I kind of hit home. <laughs> well, the- so, uh, I'm grateful for that. And, and like I say, Betty Ford was the first... Am I talking to you? Yeah, you're filibustering, and Mary Catherine no, has a question. I was just going to ask you probably what you're about to say. Just her, her funerals today, the memorial services yeah. today. What is the legacy? What is the story from your life that people should know about Betty Ford? Well, I think, like I say, the simple fact being the most high profile person right. to come out, you know, to come in from the cold herself and to bring us. I would say to, to my, my folks out there, the friends, you're not a bad person. You right. might be a sick person. But she did it, and she proved beyond a shadow of doubt that there is life after booze and drugs. Right. She had a wonderfully successful and fulfilling life. So you're not going to quit having fun. You're just going to. That's right. You know. You're going to quit puking on people you don't know. <laughs> well, Larry, we could we could talk all day, and I know you can talk all day, but we got to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning on the Morning Majority. He's a good guy he's from Odessa, Texas. We're both from Odessa, Texas. Un- unfortunately, only one of us went to the right high school. <laughs> <laughs> 